It's wonderful to have you here, Bill, as Orpheus in, in Orphe and Eurydice, and, and it's, it, it's an opera that means a great deal to me and to Seattle Opera. The first time we did it was 20 years ago, and it was a huge success then. It was, right. a, it was a work that I looked at as the first real, I don't know, the first really big success that I was able to, to put on here as general director, so it's wonderful That's to come back funny. to it. I, I want to get to Orpheus, but I think the thing about singing French, it's very different. It's not just a question of pronouncing it. I think it's, it, it's, it's more than that. It's, some, it's a feeling for the color of it. Well, Italian is sort of all out there. Uh, no holds barred. All the emotion is, is raw and extreme and you can see really from, from one end of the spectrum to the other. And the French, there's always a little bit of subtle draping. Something that is kind of wonderful and leaves, uh, leaves things up to the imagination of the listener. And, and I find that very appealing. Tell us a little bit about your preparation. Well, I, I did a little bit of study just on the character himself, just because I wanted to get um, as many sort of different takes on his life. Uh, and then I, I prepare this role pretty much the way I would almost any. So I work with the text quite a little bit, uh, the rhythms, and then start adding layer upon layer, sort of music-wise. But in this piece, too, because it is such a, a long role, uh, in the context of the, you know, without a lot of dramatic change within it, I think that I had to really explore how I could peel away the layers and keep it very, very simple. And the purity and, and simplicity that we talked about that is French music, um, you know, to really sort of explore that and, and embrace it. So it's a role I've thought about for a long time. And I think what I am most enjoying is finding the ways to let the story tell itself because Gluck has written such incredibly passionate music for Orphe. Any sort of affectation that, that might seem natural in other styles of opera I think has to be completely stripped away from this because it is, it is just replete with every emotion that one could possibly imagine having and yet it's left to the music to to tell that story. Yeah, I think that we we haven't, we haven't talked so much about Eurydice because in a way it, it this really is a it's it's so much a one person opera in so many ways. Orpheus is so much the center of it. But her role is very important when you meet her and you have the duet and I think Davinia Rodriguez will be very interesting as in she's singing this because that duet is that duet is is a strange one. It's it's virtually all accompanied recitative. Yes. And that means that the singers have to, the artists really have to work to make it, to make it live in, right. a, in, in an interesting way. But I think that's one of the things that mm -hmm. she, as, as an artist, is, it's so natural for her to, I mean, and, and my experience is limited in that I, I just got to observe her Lucia, but to, to watch her simply live out that character, um, that to me is exactly what Orivis has to do in, in this piece. And, and it's a, she plays a very interesting foil to Orphe because his, his drama is through his music. Her drama is natural. It's all a part of her person. And of course, as in all operas, um, the importance of the conductor can never be emphasized. Oh, absolutely. I'm, I've, I've known Gary for a long time, since I was an apprentice in Santa Fe. And uh, he was at that time the chorus master. And, uh, I, I, what I love the most about Gary as a conductor is that he loves singers, and it, it, is, it is palpable to us on stage to have a conductor who feels that way. You just know every single moment that he's with you and is doing everything in his power to make it the, uh, as, as easy and exciting and unique and wonderful as he possibly can, and that is invaluable. And of course, it's also important, I think, that he has a great relationship with his musicians because they, the, the Seattle Symphony musicians always love for him to come back. And, you know, it's a funny thing. I mean, they play wonderfully whatever the conductor is, but when they really like somebody, sure. it, always makes it, it always makes it better because right. they, they really love working for him. And so it's, it's fun to do. This is, I think, one of, the, one of the operas that has, it's so much, and it's in such a reasonably short period of time with so few people. It really is interesting how to... How to keep this going, but of course, there's also a lot of dance in it, too. Right. Well, both the chorus and a core of dancers are integral characters in the story. And I think in French opera, you're always going to have dance. It's just part of the French, it's a whole part of the French system. But I think the dance has got to be integrated with the chorus, as this is, so that our goal here always is that people never see 
dancers as dancers, right? As opposed to dancers as part as the chorus and dancers, everybody kind of working together. That's what, and I think that's what our director will will work on. Sure, you know, and and will work to do that because Jose Maria Condemi, the last thing he directed here was Trovatore, which was which is one of the harder operas in the world to Absolutely. direct, <laughs> and he directed it very well. So I'm I'm eager to see what he's doing with this. I think those characters are so interestingly drawn, and that to me is one of Gluck's great strengths, is that he he can create these really uh, transcendent characters out of mythology. So it's stories that possibly many people in the audience will be familiar with, but he allows these characters to become so real, um, and again, through the music. Thank you so much, Bill, for coming right out the plane virtually to do this. I appreciate it very much, and it's, it's fun to talk about it just before we start rehearsals, because who knows what's going to happen in rehearsals. Absolutely. It's good to know. Thank you so much. Thank you.